Hi, I'm Shona. I'm the Education and Outreach Manager at Geoscience Australia. Geoscience Australia brings together experts in Australia's geology and geography. In this series, we're going to explore some of Australia's landscapes and landforms. We're going to learn about some of their features and the processes that shape them. We're also going to think about how landscapes and landforms are valued and the ways humans impact and protect them. In this video, we're going to look at coastal landscapes and one of Australia's most iconic coastal landforms, the Twelve Apostles. What do you think of when I say Australia? Kangaroos? Bushland? The outback? Kookaburras? Or maybe our world-famous beaches and coastline? Over 80% of Australians live near the coast. So coastal landscapes are really important to Australians. They're part of our national identity. Where's your favourite beach? Mine's at Marimbula, down in southern New South Wales, where I've spent many years having family holidays, enjoying the sand and the surf and looking at the red cliffs on the other side of the bay. Coastal landscapes form where the land meets the sea. Coastal landscapes are shaped by the wind, the rain, the waves, the sea spray, and even animals that can weaken coastal areas, making them more easily eroded. These three key words help to explain how coastal landscapes are shaped. Weathering, erosion, and deposition. Weathering processes cause rocks in the landscape to break down. Extreme temperatures, water, salts, ice, plants and animals can all cause weathering. Erosion happens when soil, sand or rock is moved by wind or water, ice or even gravity and transported somewhere else. Deposition is the opposite of erosion. So it's where sediments like soil, sand or rocks are added to a place, moved there by things like wind or water. These processes change coastal landscapes over time. Let's take a look at some coastal landforms and how they've been shaped. This is a headland. Headlands are areas of harder, stronger rock, like these cliffs over the sea. They are slowly weathered and eroded over time by things like wind, rain and the waves. This is how caves, arches and stacks are formed. It's also how bays are formed. Next to the headland we have a bay. Bays are mostly made up of eroded material that is transported from elsewhere. For example, rock eroded from this headland has become the sand that has been transported to this bay and deposited to form this beach. Rivers can also carry sediment such as soil, sand and rocks that is taken out to sea and deposited on beaches. Sand dunes are another landform found in coastal landscapes. The sand dunes at the back of this beach are formed by wind blowing sand away from the shoreline. All these coastal landforms are constantly changing their shape due to the processes of weathering, erosion and deposition. On the southeast coast of mainland Australia, we find Port Campbell National Park. It sits along some of the most rugged coastline on Earth and it's found on the traditional lands of the Eastern Ma peoples. The movement of tectonic plates bring continents together and break them apart. And sometimes we have supercontinents, which are really, really large land masses. And here we can see the southern continents that we have today as they were when they were part of the Gondwana supercontinent. The colours here represent the matching up of fossils that can be found across the continents and helped scientists to work out how they used to be together in the past. But every supercontinent eventually breaks apart and South America and Africa moved away and gradually the southern Atlantic Ocean opened up. India moved away and really quite quickly for a tectonic plate movement collided northwards with Asia. And the last two parts to break apart were Australia from Antarctica which opened up a, a rift that gradually filled with water, and that was the beginning of the Southern Ocean. And that left Antarctica sitting on its own after about 34 million years ago, which changed the climate 
in that part of the world. And Australia is still moving northwards and away from Antarctica. For millions of years, the powerful ocean swells and winds have been shaping the areas around Port Campbell National Park. This landform is known as the Twelve Apostles. It's on Eastern Ma country. For thousands of years, First Nations people fished near the bases of the limestone cliffs and stacks rising from the ocean. This area was abundant with food in the water and on the nearby cliffs. How do you think the Twelve Apostles were formed and shaped like this? Can you find out if weathering, erosion or deposition is involved in their formation? Why do you think these landforms are valued? And how are they managed? <laughs>